Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and in today's edition, I want to cover the 2023 Perry Nice. Of course, we all do, right? It's the big showdown. The 2022 favorites in the Tour de France, first and second, Tadej Pogacar second, Jonas Vinigo, winner of last year's Tour de France. These two riders are both going to show up at Perry Nice, so we need to show up, right? You need to be sitting on the Chesterfield popcorn ready to go or big breakfast burrito, whatever it happens to be if you're here in the United States when the when the viewing coverage starts so early, you want to tune in because this is the big time battle we've all been waiting for. It's a rarity to get to see, and nowadays to get to see two Tour de France guys first and second get the battle so early in the following season to get us prepared for the 2023 Tour de France, right? That's what Perry Nice is known for as being the small Tour de France and the preparation for it. But when you're looking at the race, you want to make sure you understand what's going on between the two big guys because you have Two flat stages, one team time trial, one mountain stage, a couple flatter stages, and then, of course, two big mountain stages that's going to finish there in Nice on Col d'Ez. And so when we get done after stage eight, when everything's wrapped up, no matter who won at Perry Nice, won't really matter if, it's, if there's reasons, if there was crashes, if the team time trial split the time up too much. What you really want to be paying attention to, which rider was better, right? Okay, you watched last year's Tour de France, and a lot of you think that Jonas Vinigo is the better of the two riders, and I think you guys are crazy. But you got something to argue with because he won the Tour de France, right? When I looked at the 2022 Tour de France, and when I was calling it for NBC, I was arguing with Christian Vanderfeld, and he said, Jonas Vinigo is the best climber, best rider in the world at this moment. And I looked over at him. We're sitting up there at the studios, which I won't be doing coverage for NBC this year. But when I looked over him at the at the studios, I looked at him and I thought, are you crazy? There's no way Jonas Vinigo is the best rider in the world right now. And he said he was willing to actually buy Jonas Vinigo over Tadej Pogacar. I thought he was crazy. Now, here's my reasons. First off, when you look at the stage wins, the mountain stage wins from Jonas Vinigo, I don't think he ever dropped Tadej Pogacar. Did he get to the finish first on those two mountain stages, Otakam and Stage 11 up Ganon? Sure he did. But Ganon, I think it was just a major bunk for Tade Pogacar and a catastrophic nightmare for UAE Team Emirates. Every member of the team, every director, every guy standing on the side of the road wearing a UAE Team Emirates jersey handing up bottles. I think they are all knuckleheads on Stage 11. He bonked, and that was the end of the story. Jonas Vinigo goes on the win. Now, when I was sitting up there with the NBC, Christian Vanderveld's talking about how, oh man, Jonas Vinigo pulled amazing numbers, the best. He went up to climb super fast. I looked over at Christian and I said, Christian, dude, we're talking about Nairo Quintana going second just about a minute back. How fast could he have gone if, if Nairo Quintana was sitting second? Nairo Quintana had a solid ride up the climb, sure, but we all watched stage 11. He was hurting. He was on the limit at the, at the very end there on the Ganon, begging for water from his teammate when he passed him. And then, of course, Jonas Vinigo goes on to win the stage. But people always get a little excited when stuff like that happens. And you break down that stage 11 like I did on the butterfly effect. I broke that all down for you guys, and you can watch the video again. And before this year's Tour de France, I'm going to break it down for you again to go even a little bit deeper. But when you look at that stage, Tadej Pogacar was isolated. He bonked, didn't eat, tacked too much, spent too much time on the front. So those are the mistakes Tadej Pogacar wants to avoid here at Perry Nice. Now, remember, the team time trial is going to change everything. Well, could possibly change everything. Maybe it doesn't change everything. But the team time trial could change everything With when you're looking at Jumbo Visma and they have such hitters on that team. I mean, they got a lot of strong guys. Jonas Vinigo's time trial and good. He's already won and just devastated the field over there in Galicia in Spain at Gran Camion. And so we know he's on flying form and we know he's time trial and good. Now, there wasn't a ton of talent over there in Galicia, so when you look at it, you go, ah, man, he just didn't beat anyone. Okay, I don't have to look and see that there wasn't the same kind of talent that Tadej Pogacar is winning against in high end when he's going 40 kilometers solo, and then he shows up at Ruta del Sol, and he beats Mikel Landa, who's podium that Grand Tours left and right. That's a quality field. But when you go over there and you look at Jonas Vinigo's win, just his acceleration to drop the field and the way he accelerated without having to de-accelerate 
that much. Like the big acceleration is huge, and then a small deacceleration, then up the cobblestone climb, and all the way in for his first victory of the season, and then backing that up with another summit victory, and then backing it up with a time trial, and then taking the overall victory. Just with the acceleration that I saw on the pedals tells me that Jonas Vinigo is on flying form. Now, the question is, Tade Pogacar, what kind of team does he have backing him up? First off, they didn't bring a sprinter, UAE Team Emirates, so that means he's got all six guys wrapped around him to focus on trying to win the general classification here at Perry Nice. Now, he's got Matteo Trentin, who's solid on the flats, and then he's got a couple climbers in the form of Felix Groschartner, Dominic Novak, and then Tim Wellens I'm going to throw in there because I think Tim Wellens can get over these climbs with the kind of form that I've seen him have early in this season. We go up to the Yumbo Visma squad and we start taking a look at these guys and you really see they have the sprinter there, Olaf Koy, which may take away some power or may take away from Jonas Vinigo getting a little bit of help near the finish on this stage one and stage two. When it comes to the team time trial, of course, sprinters are very good in the team time trial. So Olaf Koy could be very strong there. And they have Rowan Dennis. We don't know if Rowan Dennis is 100% on form right now, but if he is, that could just be the deciding factor right there to give the edge to Jonas Vinigo's Jumbo Visma squad when we come out of this team time trial because we all know Rowan Dennis, if he's on 100% flying form and then Jonas Vinigo on form, that's two strong guys and they can definitely turn the tide in the team time trial that's 32 kilometers long and, start, can, and can start taking out some time on UA Team Emirates. Now, they got a tricky team time trial because it's not going to be the fourth place rider anymore that has to cross the line. First rider gets his time, so that means Tade Pogacar's team and, of course, Jumbo Visma, all teams out there for that matter, could go full gas and just start dropping off their riders left and right throughout the stage. But when you come to Jumbo Visma, Volof Koy is possibly winning the field sprints and he's wearing the race leader's jersey. Will he sacrifice 100% for Jonas Vinigo to get the race leader's lead there for Jumbo Visma or will he stay with the race leader? So those things to keep in mind when you're watching the stage. Now the biggest thing when it comes to the big time battle, and I'll get back to that Tour de France second win for Jonas Vinigo when we're talking about at Oticom. Remember that stage Tade Bogacar was attacking the climb before that full gas, left and right in the wind, went over the top of that and crashed. And then, of course, Jonas Vinigo went on to drop him and go up that stage. But did you really drop him? In my book, you didn't really drop him if the guy crashed coming down the descent and then you went up with Wout Van Aert in front of you and that's what it took to get rid of Tade Bogacar. So when I look at Jonas Vinigo's wins at the Tour de France on the mountain stages, I don't consider those dropping Tade Bogacar. And I guarantee you Tade Bogacar doesn't consider that either. So this year at Perry Nice, the most important factor why you tuned in today, if it comes down to Jonas Vinigo winning Perry Nice, and Tade Pogacar finishing second again. What matters most is when we get on these mountain stages, if Tade Pogacar has been put in the right place, they're going up the climb together, and Jonas Vinigo can drop him like he did in Galicia down there, all of a sudden now one of the riders is going to worry. If Tade Pogacar drops Jonas Vinigo and the opposite effect happens, Jonas Vinigo is going to know that his Tour de France was won on tactical mistakes from Tade Pogacar and not him just being out there being the best rider. They're going to always look at that. They won't just look at who crosses the line first and whether or not if that's the deciding factor. And so many times when I'm out on the group rides, that's what people tell me, right? At the 2022 Tour de France, I'd hear, Jonas Vinigo is the best rider in the world. And I'd have to hear it from Christian Vanderfield sitting next to me at NBC when earlier, you got to remember, we were calling Tade Pogaccio the Eddie Merckx on stage one of the Tour de France. And I don't believe things can change just from one stage 11 at the Tour de France and you can flip a rider over. So at the end of Perry Nice, make sure you pay attention to the mountain stages and that's really going to get into the psyche of the riders. Win or lose won't be what really affects the psyche of Tade Pogaccio and Jonas Vinigo. But if you got dropped, if Tade Pogaccio is getting dropped from Jonas Vinigo and he looks down at his power meter, and he's averaging 420 watts up the last climb, and he can't stay with Jonas Vinigo, that's going to get into the psyche. So keep that in mind. That's the biggest thing to remember throughout the mountain stages here at Perry Nice, and certainly at the finish, the deciding factor of whether one rider is affected by the results at Perry Nice. It'll have to be just getting flat out dropped without crashing, without pulling left and right throughout the stages, without doing knucklehead tactics like on Grenon for UAE Team Emirates, those will not affect Tade Bogacar, but if he just gets ridden off the wheel for no reason, at the end of Perry Nice, the sat will absolutely get into the psyche of the Slovenian 
if he's losing because Jonas Vini goes pulling 10, 15, 20 watts more than Tadej Pogacar. And if Tadej Pogacar drops Jonas Vigo in his psyche, it's going to start affecting him for the Tour de France. Hope you guys like my take here on Beyond the Coverage. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. The next edition, I want to cover Trino Adriatico and whether or not if Wout Van Aert can win the general classification there. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition real soon.